everybody and welcome to Chateau de Rosière. This is the second in our 10 minute chateau tours and today we're going to be taking you around the very old cellar of Chateau de Rosière and explaining a bit about the history of wine here which stretches back over a thousand years and we hope you enjoy. I'm here in the cellar of Rosier. Technically, it's not a cellar because we were on the ground floor, but I'm going to show you now what is one of my favorite rooms. You'll understand why. We are here in the tower. Um, it's probably probably 15th century, given the dimensions. Uh, what's really interesting is that we have uh, remains of a blocked window or door. I don't don't really know um, that we can see that was blocked reasonably recently, probably in the 19th century. Um, so that's some work we'll do one day. Uh, to unblock this window. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it because uh, first because it will make the room a bit bigger and also because we'll be able to see what's behind. The next room is also really cool. So it's still inside the tower. It is this room. So we have a beautiful arch door and we have in here a medieval toilet uh, we have the so the stone here uh, where the loo used to be behind this we have a drain going through the tower uh, probably into a pit and in this side we have a good bit of the tower that's completely walled and inside this bit we have a big chimney that uh, with an air intake outside the tower on, uh, on this side and it, uh, it goes up through the wall and so it's, in, it's uh, interrupted at the first floor but I'm pretty sure it used to go all the way up the, the tower and my guess is that it was a ventilation system for the toilet uh, because the, we would have had the cold air com coming from the bottom and being sucked uh, through the tower in the chimney and so it would, um, it would ventilate all the bad smells because you imagine here that uh, if you had the soldiers using this toilet in the, in the 15th century it would, uh, you didn't have running water in the chateau at the time and so it's quite likely that it used to smell really bad. And this ventilation system made it, uh, well, I acted as a, an air purifier, uh, probably for the whole tower. What's really interesting as well in this tower is that we have on the walls two little labels, uh, 19th century, that say this one is Hermitage Blanc Cahier 1846. And this one is Hermitage Boutu 1865. So the, they are all the uh, wine labels. And Hermitage is a very prestigious uh, wine uh, quite close to here down the valley in uh, Tain d'Hermitage. It's one of the best in the Northern Rhone Valley. And uh, it means that this toilet has been used as a wine cellar since at least the 19th century which I find really interesting. I hope you enjoyed that tour of the cellar. Mark gets very enthusiastic about our wine cellar. 
Um, and in fact, I'm going to talk to you more about wine today. Funny I'm doing it because I'm not the wine expert in this family. But I found this bottle of Hermitage wine in our cellar and asked Mark about it. I've never tried Hermitage. It's one of the most prestigious wines in the world and it's grown just down from here in the Rhone Valley. I say just down, it's a 40 minute drive for us to get there, but it's one of our closest towns. It's a tiny little hillside that produces all the Hermitage in the world. And Charpoutier, uh, one of the main producers there and this is a bottle from 1982 and it's a sweet Hermitage and the cute thing is that Mark bought this way before we even met and way before we knew we were going to live in this area so I feel like it's a bit of um I was going to say omen but that's a bad sign uh, <laughs> a good sign that we were going to come and live here we were destined for here Today I'm going to talk to you about the history of vine growing in Rosier and wine producing. And this history goes back over a thousand years and continued into the 20th century. Um, and I'm going to take you outside and show you the terraces where vines were grown and wine was produced and where we hopefully are going to start planting our own vines and producing our own wine in the coming few years. I'm standing here on one of the higher areas of the estate of the Chateau de Rosière. Uh, we now have around 130 acres of land belonging to the chateau, which is only a small proportion of what there was in previous centuries, but it's still a decent section of land attached to the chateau. The history of vine growing here is extremely interesting. We don't know a massive amount of, about it, but we do know that for over the last thousand years, vines have been grown here to produce wine at different points. One of the earliest references we have is from the, the essentially the accounting books that belonged to an abbey based in the Rhone Valley who established a priory in the village of Saint Felicien, our village. And they established the priory in the 9th century and in the 10th century they started to keep their records and work out what was grown in different places and what money it produced. And Mark found a record of one of these that said that vines were being grown on the lower slopes of the valley beneath the chateau, which is pretty amazing to know that for more than a thousand years they've been growing vines here to produce wine. We're also going to produce wine down in that area, hopefully, but we hope to do quite a lot up here on these terraces. We found these terraces hidden in amongst the woods and the, they'd been falling into ruin because in the late 1960s, all of the land of Rosier was uh, just ploughed up and planted with immense Douglas fir plantations, which turned into a big uh, black forest that nothing grew in. And we've gradually been picking it apart since then. The, the forest was cut down some 20 years ago. Um, we've been going through the scrub and working out what's actually there. And we found these beautiful, beautiful terraces that are absolutely perfect for growing wine. And Mark has a background in wine. He studied onology at university and his family have uh, numerous vineyards as well and produce some beautiful wines. So we're quite excited to try and produce grapes here, even though we're quite high up. These terraces at the top, we don't know um, how long they were growing vines, but we do know that they were grown um, in the first half of the 20th century. We have some aerial photographs that show that there were vines on these upper terraces in 1948. And in 1961, an aerial photograph shows that there were still vines up here. And we have an amazing resource in a man called Monsieur Bergeron, who lives in the village and he loves Rosier and he used to live in one of the outbuildings here in the 60s and he remembers ploughing in between the vines with a team of oxen with another man from the village back in the 1960s and he remembers that that was sometime between 1965 and 1970 and we know that the Douglas plantation was begun in 1965 and finished again by 1970 so some point around then after Monsieur Bergeron was ploughing these vines uh, they uh, cut them all down and planted Douglas fir, which is a real shame. We also, we, so we don't have any remnants of the vines in any way. 
we also don't know what was here before because the phylloxera virus of the late 19th century killed all vines so there's no chance that any of the vines that were grown here commercially could have just spread into the wild and we can find them which is sad our aim in replanting this area with vines is we're going to look into lots of old varieties of uh, grape that maybe have nearly disappeared uh, from use and Mark's found one in particular and wants to bring it back and we also want to explore some more exotic um, vines from overseas and we're really excited to get on with that project because it feels like we're returning um, the Chateau's estate again uh, back to its roots of a diverse and dynamic estate. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed that small chateau tour and an introduction to vine growing and wine producing at Rosière. Uh, we really enjoyed showing it to you and we'd love you to subscribe to our videos if you want to make sure that you can see more again in future. Thank you.